It was a robber's daughter, and her name was Alice Brown. Her father was a terror of a small Italian town. Her mother was a foolish, weak but amiable old thing. But it isn't of her parents that I'm going for to sing. As Alice was a sitting at her window sill one day, a beautiful young gentleman he chanced to pass that way. She cast her eyes upon him, and he looked so good and true. But Alice was a pious girl who knew it wasn't wise to look at strange young soldiers with expressive purple eyes. So she sought the village priest to whom her family confessed. The priest by whom their little sins were carefully assessed. Oh, holy father, I will grieve you, would you not, to discover that I was the most disreputable lord of all unhappy sinners and the most unhappy one. Whatever have you been and gone and done? I have helped Mama to steal little Kitty from its dad. I've assisted dear Papa in cutting up the little lad. I've planned the little birdread and forged the little check, and slayed the little baby for the coral on its neck. The worthy pastor heaved a sigh and dropped a silent tear. Girls will be girls. You are very young and fatly in your mind. Old heads upon young shoulders, we must not expect to find. We mustn't be too hard upon these little great shakes. Let's see, five crimes at half a crown, exactly twelve and six. Oh, father, your kindness makes me weep. You do these little things for me so singly cheap. Your thoughtful liberality I never can forget. But only I saw another crime I haven't mentioned yet. A pleasant-looking gentleman with pretty purple eyes. I've noticed at my window as I sat catching flies. He passes by there every day, as certain as can be. I blush to say I've winked at him, and he has winked at me. For shame, my erring daughter! On my word, this is the most disgusting news that I have ever heard. Why, naughty girl! Your excellent papa has planted your head to a promising young robber, the lieutenant of his band. This dreadful piece of news will pain your worthy parents' soul. They are the most remunerative customers I know. For many, many years, they have kept starvation from my doors. I never know so criminal a family as yours. The common country folks in this simple neighborhood have nothing to confess. They are so ridiculous good. And if you marry the anyone respectable at all, why you will reform, and what will then become of Father Paul? The worthy priest he up and drew his cowl upon his crown and started off in haste to tell the news to Robert Brown, to tell him how his daughter, who now was for marriage fit, had winked upon a soldier who reciprocated it. Good Robert Brown, he muffled up his anger pretty well. I have a notion. And that notion I will tell. I will nab this gay young soldier, terrify him into fit, and get my gentle wife to chop him into little bits. I've studied human nature, and I know a thing or two. Though a girl may fondly love a living gent, as many do, a feeling of disgust upon her senses there will fall. When she looks upon his body, chopped, particularly small, he chased that gallant soldier to a still suburban square. He watched his opportunity and seized him unaware. He took a life preserver and he hit him on the head. And Mrs. Brown dissected him before she went to bed. And pretty little Alice grew more settled in her mind. She never more was guilty of a weakness of the kind. Until at length, good Robert Brown battled her hand on the promising young robber, the lieutenant of his band.